Now, the second aspect of movement, what did we mention? The, the next step would be moving a greater distance to either close the distance to engage or create distance to move back to a better tactically advantaged position or cover or whatever. All we're doing here is learning how to efficiently move with a loaded gun. So what are our options on, on moving with a loaded gun? High port, low port. Pretty simple, right? Remember how earlier we talked about moving with the gun the way we would move without a gun. So what typically happens, what typically happens is people get a gun in their hand and they get a little bit stupid on how they move. Does this look like it's natural and fluid? No. <laughs> Doesn't look very, very natural. Would you, would you run, would you naturally run like this? Never. <laughs> It was. Weak arm. What is that? Dead weak arm. Only when wearing to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Just ten seconds. No, we use our body in with something called kinetic cross-linking. We want to use our arms to aid our legs in movement. So we don't want to move rigid like that. We also don't want, if we're moving high port, to move like this. Again, that's not efficient. Do you think I have better balance like this or like this? Because I'm using my arms. Same thing, muzzle down. Better balance like this or like this? So that's how, that's part of the reason we're doing this is to learn how to efficiently move with the gun while maintaining control of the muzzle. Is there a chance that you could fall out here? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, a big chance. A big chance. Very big. Is it better to fall muzzle up or muzzle down? Depends. Down. If I'm hauling ass and I fall like this, is it better to fall on the gun here, or if I were to fall, to fall with the gun like this? Does it really matter? Because might the muzzle cover someone in the world? Yeah. But if my finger's not on the trigger, and my safety is engaged because my primary safety is engaged, then I'm just going to have to make the best of a shitty situation. Even though the terrain here is a little riskier, we want you guys to be methodical about this, but concentrate on using your body. You're much more likely to fall like this or like this. So the point is we're going to practice muzzle up and muzzle down. If you're moving towards a group of people, is it better to have muzzle up or muzzle down? Muzzle down. Is there really a right answer? Because it's dictated by what? Always. So we should be comfortable doing both. If you are moving muzzle down, the best orientation is to think about this muzzle or the axis of the gun like a stripper pole or maybe a fireman's pole. Some of you may not know what a stripper pole is. Ben had to explain it to me. Okay, So I've got this vertical pole that I'm carrying and if I'm moving, I'm, I want the buttstock up close to my ear because I can move here and pump my arms and I can keep this thing and I can pump my arms and I can stop and pivot around it. If I get this buried in my pivot point, then am I more likely to start waving it around in the world. So moving muzzle down, we want that buttstock here, treating that like a vertical pole that we can pivot around. If I'm moving muzzle up, the key is to kind of trap the gun here, get this hand off of the gun and use both. Because I can move around all of you here and still keep my balance and minimize my my uh, risk of falling. Okay? To the point of footwork, because you're gonna you're gonna be pivoting and moving. 
if we could teach ballroom dancers to shoot, they would they would destroy people because of their ability to move feet or move their feet. And think about you guys if you're on, even in your own home, this applies to you. If you're the protector of your home, this applies to you. If you're on an entry team, on a SWAT team, this applies to you. If you're gonna move around a vehicle in life defending yourself, this applies to you. We need to be able to flow and move our feet flawlessly and pivot around furniture, objects, kids, shopping carts, whatever the case may be. So again, movement is key. Okay? There's also the football carry. Football carry. There is that. If I there's imagine a, this gun. There's a disadvantage to it though. I could carry over a greater distance like this. There are people that say you should always carry over a greater distance like this. If we're going to be moving from say the 50, we'll, we'll actually move up, we're not going to move that far. Let's say we're going to go from the 40 to the 10, and your intent is to start engaging as soon as you get there. Should you carry that distance like this? No. We don't think so. Now if you're going from the 10 to the 100, you may choose to haul ass and use your body as efficiency like this. Okay? That can, that can happen when you do it. Just that, be aware. That's, that's also true. Yeah. If you place your thumb there, you can hit that magazine release. Yeah. Okay?